to me is being used by somebody else. When somebody else has something that you want, but you don't have no right to it, you don't have no business with it, you don't have, there's no justification where you should have it, that's called envy. In other words, if you see somebody else riding a nice car, a new car, and you start feeling as the streets say some type of way, that's called envy. Why? Because you're upset about something you don't have no right doing. You don't have no right to it. It don't belong to you. You didn't work for it. It don't got your name on it. So there's no reason for you to feel that way. But now, however, if I see the new car driving down the road and my wife is on the passenger side, now that's a whole nother thing because I got a right to feel some type of way. Amen. <clears throat> So God says to the people, he says, I'm blessing you, but please don't forget about me. Amen. I've kept you, I've held you up, I've sustained your life, and now that you're doing good, he says, don't leave me. Because if anybody deserved your time, I do. Amen. Because I'm the one who brought you out. If anybody deserves your worship, that's me. Because I'm the one who kept you through what you was going through. If anybody deserves you to come and to lay down or bow down before me, if anybody deserves your emotions and anybody deserves your love, if anybody deserves your loyalty, he says, I'm the one who deserves it because I'm the one that's been there with you all through what you was going through. I'm the one that never left you nor forsake you. I'm the one that wrapped you in, your, um, in my arms when you was crying in the middle of the night when they lied on you and talked about you and turned their bikes on you. And when your best friend did you wrong, yeah. he says, I'm the one that held you up. Now that you're doing better, please don't forget about yes, me. Yes, Lord. He says, I'm a jealous God. It hurts me to see what belongs to me go somewhere else. It hurts me to see you worship somebody. It hurts me to see you bow down. So he says, don't even make no graven images. Don't make no, don't, don't draw nothing. Don't make nothing, grave an image to make something, whether it be out of wood or clay or whatever, draw something and give your attention to it. That's one of the reasons why I told the people, I said, I know, and even me, myself, I grew up doing the Easter egg hunts, but as a pastor, that's something that I stopped because I believe that it's a graven image. It is something that does not coincide with the word of God. The egg ain't got nothing to do with the birth, I mean, with the resurrection of Christ. Yes. It ain't got nothing to do with Jesus. So why send our kids out there chasing out the eggs when we need to be teaching them about Christ who came to die and to go to hell and to be raised up on the third day? For this ain't got nothing to do with egg. Use the egg some other time. Use the, the bunny rabbit some other time. But on this day, we recognize the life, the death, and the burial of Jesus Christ. Because if it had not been for him, I wouldn't have been, I wouldn't made it, I wouldn't be here right now. If it had not been for him, I'd be on my way to hell. If it had not been for him, I'd still be in my sin. If it had not been for God, I wouldn't have survived what I've been through. I would have died in the world. I would have died in the streets. I would have died in that car accident. I would have died in the club. I would have died getting high. I would have died getting drunk. But it was because the blood of Jesus washed yes. over me and kept me and sustained me. And even when I wasn't loving him. Yes. Amen. See, let me something. Jesus did not start loving you when you got saved. Amen. Amen. I'm going to say that again. Jesus did not start loving you when you got saved. He was loving you when you was in the club. Yeah. He was loving you when you was getting drunk. He was loving you when you was walking the streets. He was loving you when you were selling dope. He showed his love. Oh. And that while you were sinning against him, he still kept you. And that while you were doing all that you thought you were big enough and bad enough to do, he still protected your life. Yeah. I got friends who didn't make it to C41. They didn't make it. I got friends who are in prison. But God has been good to court. Oh, God. I got some friends that were more talented than me, that were smarter than me, that were gifted in me, they had better personalities than me, but life has taken over, life has beat them, life has hurt them, but God has been good to me. Yes. He has kept me. I don't have some ups and I don't have some downs, but through all that I've been through, God has been good to me. I've never had to go a day without food, without shelter. He has been good to me. Amen. Not just 
when I was good. Amen. He was good when I was bad. Yes, he was merciful. He was merciful. Yes. What is mercy? Mercy is being loved and cared for when you should be punished. Mercy is him not giving me what I deserve. That's what mercy is. Mercy is when you know you're supposed to get a whooping. Mercy is when you know. You ever been driving down the road and, 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 and you're breaking the speed limit and you know you're breaking the speed limit and you're doing your thing and all of a sudden you see a cop parked on the side but it's too late for you to really slow down because you ain't seeing fast enough and so you just go on by and, and oh, and oh, your heart dropped into your stomach. Oh, and you, you deserve a ticket. You, if he pull you over, he is within his right. Yes. You deserve to be punished. Mm -hmm. But mercy. Yes. Yes. Mercy allowed you to continue on. Amen. How many times have you been broke down, drunk? Lord, if you keep me. God, if you Amen. make it through this. <clears throat> Hey. God, if you don't let this, if you don't let me, die. God, if you take, yeah. God, if you help, throwing up, holding on to the <laughs> yep. God, if you just keep it this one last time, I ain't Amen. never gonna do this. How many times have we said to God, if you keep me this time, if you watch over me this time, if you bring me out this, it might not be alcohol, it might be something else. How many times you've been in a bad dream, should have been, you shouldn't have been in, and you say, God, if you just watch over me this time, if you let me make it home. I don't want no ads, I don't want no bad shit. This is all about him. Because I understand how much he loved me. I understand how much he loved me. I understand how much. See, I heard a song on, what was that? Who was that the church? Friday night. Somebody said something and I, I just began to meditate on what they said. There's a scripture I believe in the book of Leviticus when the man of God says, Lord, you are my portion. Yes. Oh, God, that's so sweet. Oh, God. See, some of y'all don't read your Bible, you don't know what I'm talking about right now. But the man of God said, Lord, you are my portion. You are my portion. Yes. What does that mean? That means everything I need, you are. Yes. Everything I need, you are that. You are my portion. You are my peace. If I need protection, that's who you are. If I need provision, that's who you are. If I need wisdom, that's who you are. See, to understand that God is your portion, you can say everybody in the world can turn their back on me and walk away and leave me by myself. I'd be just fine. Why? Because God, the Lord, is my portion. Things that I thought was going to work out fell apart right in my face, but that's okay. I'm not going to flip out. I'm not going to trip because the Lord is my portion. I got a bad doctor's report, but I'm not going to get weary because God is my portion. Yeah. Just think about that sometimes. I, oh, God, that's so sweet to me. I don't care how bad it's seen. God, you are my portion. You are my portion. Whatever I need, that's who you are. You're not going to let me die. You're not going to turn your back on me. I'm going to make it through this. Mm -hmm. You brought me through that. You brought me through that. You're going to bring me through this too. You are my portion. You're my port. You're my defense. You're my strength. You're my wisdom. You're my joy. You're my peace. You're my grace. You're my grace. You're my grace. You're my forgiveness. Even when I mess up, I love you because I can come to you and confess what I did and you wipe my slate clean. I don't have to allow guilt and condemnation to trouble me and hold me down. I can run to you. I don't have to be afraid. See, God is not like man. See, when man, when we mess up with man, oh, we have to be, we have to be careful. We have to go to man with fear and trembling because we don't know how they're going to respond to our mistake. You mess up on your job and you tell your boss you might get fired. 
Because man is not like God. Amen. But when you go to God, <clears throat> God says perfect love drives out all fear. Yes. God said you don't have to worry about coming to me with nothing. Because I love you and my love is perfect. What does it mean to have perfect love? And I'm going to finish with this. What is perfect love? And this is the difference between man and God. God loves complete. It's perfect. And because his love is perfect, there is nothing that I can say to him that would change the way he feels about me. There is nothing that I can say to God. There is nothing you can tell God about Corey that would change the way God feels about me. His love is perfect. His love is complete. That's the difference between God and man. See, we as human, we can't love like that. Can't love like that. We have what you call conditional love. I love you and show love to you as long as you don't say or do something that makes me mad. Yeah. And as long as you stay inside of the boundaries that I have prescribed, I will continue to love you and show my love to you. Because mm. what is love that is not shown? But if you go outside of the boundaries, then the love that I have and show will be taken away. That's man. That's human love. We're just, we're just human. But God loves is perfect. And that God says there is nothing you can say or do that will ever change the way I feel and demonstrate myself to you. I love you unconditionally. I love even the ugly stuff. I love it all. I love you. I love you. And since I love you, I love everything that is about you. There are some things that I want you to change, but I love it. My love towards you is complete. You understand that? That's very powerful. That's very powerful. To understand that God loves me regardless. Regardless. I ain't got to jump in no hoops. I ain't got to try to fill out no application. I ain't got to do all this crazy stuff to try to keep you happy with me. I can be myself. Stay breath and all. <laughs> and he still loves me. Even the ugly parts. Even the ugly parts. And so God says, in return for that, Corey, I want you to understand this. I am a jealous God. Don't give my love to somebody else. Thank you. Don't give my devotion to somebody else. Don't give my worship to somebody else. If you're going to serve somebody with your life, he says, serve me. Yeah. If you're going to use your tongue to worship and celebrate somebody, he says, give that to me. If you're going to give your time to somebody on Sunday, he says, give it to me. Because I'm, I'm the only one who deserves that from you. Nobody else deserves that. He says, I'm the only one. I'm jealous. I have a right to your time. I have a right to your body. I have a right to you. I, I died for you. I bled for you. Nobody else did that for you. I have a right to you. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Therefore, I am a jealous God. I am a jealous God. Put your hands together. Amen. God, but he's also a loving yes, he is. God, and he will take me any way I come, but he don't want me to stay any way. He wants me to change, and he wants me to improve, and he wants me to uh, lay aside, as the Bible say, my sins and my weight, but however I come to him, he's okay with that. He's okay with that. Everybody that really loves the Lord today. Amen.